you. Good evening, everybody. Today, I would like to tell you about the power of your hold, the power of your subconsciousness, and how you control it. But let me tell you a story. Once, I landed in this completely strange situation. It seemed pretty normal at first. My mom was organizing a dinner party as we were looking forward to guests coming. After helping her out, I went upstairs to prepare myself. I heard cutlery banging and suddenly knocking on the front door. My mom shouted, calling me to come to greet our guests. I stressed a little as I was not ready, but I hurried and sped down the stairs. As soon as I was that close to the first floor, I noticed something was off. It was something with the bus really hanging on the wall. Suddenly, darkness popped out of it and tried to catch me. I jumped back and shrieked. To release stress, I decided to do a method I learned from a psychologist, basically connecting your right thumb with other fingers in order to four, three, five, two, four, three, five. You probably already know it. Do not judge me, I was having a glance of strong emotions, okay? And then it hit me. I had four fingers, and how many fingers can you see in my right hand? I really hope you do see that. It was just a dream. And I knew it was a dream. I had full control over it. I read about it before, but I never really believed that. And that was amazing. I tried to imagine a green, peaceful field, just like in the cartoons. After everything, it was out there, completely uninhabited. It was an amazing and empowering experience. And that is exactly what I will be talking about today. As you already know, my name is Marcelina, and I am passionate about biology and psychology. And today, I want to show you how this dream kind of became a breakthrough in the history of psychology. And most importantly, how can you subdue your subconsciousness and use the night time to explore your mind? But let me start from the beginning. What is exactly a lucid dream? A lucid dream is a type of dream in which the dreamer becomes aware of the fact that they are in the state of being fully asleep and dreaming. The dreamer can gain some part of the control or be fully able to change the narrative, characters, and environment around. The issue of having this part of your consciousness by being unconscious, so lucid dream, noticed even in the ancient times, but back then it was understood as a revelation, a blessing from the first major or a hallucination. Thus, it was not deep enough. Not until 1930, when Dutch psychiatrist and author Frederick van Aden published an article, A Study of My Dreams, in which the diary was quite self explanatory he studied his dreams recorded in a journal for 40 years and categorized 300 he also put attention that, in his opinion, those were the most interesting and worthy of the most careful observation and study. In the following years, scientists like David Barrett or Paul Foley followed the thought of Van Aden, and by summarizing his and their works, they separately came up with a complete and self satisfying definition of a lucid dream. It has to fulfill seven different conditions regarding the awareness of the dreamer, which are Awareness of the dream state, so orientation. Awareness of the capacity to make decisions. Awareness of the clear memory of the waking world, of yourself. Awareness of the dream environment, knowing that actions taken in the dream will not have consequences in the reality. Awareness of the possible meaning of the dream, and having the ability to concentrate your thoughts. It seems like a lot now, but in reality, it is simply about the dreamer being able to defeat they dream between the real world. But most people still weren't convinced that there is a chance, there is a possibility for your brain cells to regenerate when you're still being partially conscious. They knew only one definition of sleeping, which, even according to the Merriam Webster dictionary, was the natural, easily reversible periodic state of many things that is marked by the absence of wakefulness and by the loss of consciousness. Thankfully, a person named Celia B appeared on the stem a woman who in 1968 directly connected lucid dreaming with the REM sleep, which we know as rapid eye movement sleep or simply REM phase. Her studies, <laughs> her discovery, led to a series of studies conducted by Dr. Keith Hearn, which in 1975 
using electrocardiogram, managed to communicate with the one asleep. He asked the professional lucid dreamer to, whenever he gets into, into a dream, signal his consciousness by a set of predefined eye movements. And they succeeded. After this experiment, lucid dreaming finally became a scientific term and was recognized by the Society for Psychical Research. This event, psychiatrists all over the globe are trying to find possible implications of this incredible phenomenon. Among other things, lucid dreaming has been used during the therapy of uh, Picard nightmares, resulting from mental illnesses or disorders, such as self-mutilation, depression, or post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Many psychotherapists have already applied lucid dreaming as a part of therapy, as studies conducted by researchers like Victor Spurmark or Robert Van Bell have shown that lucid dreaming makes the quality of sleep slightly increase and the nightmare frequency decrease. However, as Paula Constant likes to say, we can't have nice things in the world. Thus, there are some risks we have to be aware of before including it as a part of the treatment. A small group of patients admitted that having consciousness by being asleep made them feel even more overwhelmed and weakened because they were trapped in their own minds. This feeling of stress, confusion, and worry boosted. There was not a single cause during the therapy, during this research, when the patient, <laughs> the patient's therapy went to actual psychosis. However, um, it still remains a huge risk, especially with the mentally unstable people. Nevertheless, it is a risk that many of them are willing to take. Another quite questionable aspect proposed by the scientists is sleep paralysis, which is often mistaken or confused with lucid dreaming. Honestly, I could do a whole other speech just about it, so I will try to be brief. Sleep paralysis is a stage when you wake up or falling asleep, when the person is conscious but is unable to move or speak. During such episode, the person may hallucinate or hear a bunch of sounds like hissing, roaring, whispering. Many of them also report the feeling of pain in their head and the feeling of pressure on their chest. I, myself, have experienced it once, but I do not associate it with negative memories. I was feeling as I was being dragged from my bed and just flew from my bedroom, up and down, right and left. Honestly, sleep paralysis can lead to real consequences, such as paranoia or can be a sign of narcolepsy. So if you experience it regularly, please consult a psychologist as soon as possible. You may wonder, what exactly does it have to do with lucid dreaming? Well, we're trying to achieve the state of being conscious in your sleep. The probability of experiencing sleep paralysis significantly increases. And I understand that you may feel scared about that right now, but according to the Handbook of Sleep Medicine, there is a 50% chance of it happening in your life anyway, so I think it is better to experience it in this particular bowl. Now, I would like you to imagine this trick. You have this recurrent nightmare where you are being chased by a monster of your choice, and then you trip and start falling. And you are falling and falling and falling and falling, and it just doesn't stop until you wake up. And when you do, you know it was just a dream. It probably did not even mean anything, you think. But the next night, everything happens again. You start to feel a little uncomfortable. Night after that, everything happens again. You start to be in that loop. You start to be defined by the fear of the night. What if I told you there are actual techniques that can prevent that from happening? You don't have to be a lucid dreamer, only by like 2 out of 100 people are. First, try to remember as many details from your dreams as possible. I would suggest starting a dreaming journal. I have mine right here, and as you can see, it doesn't have to be anything special. It is a note I bought last summer from Pitonka for like free slot. But start. Just start. It gets easier with any time. Secondly, 
before you are going to fall asleep, create a world in your mind where you make decisions. It is actually a very important part because it's stimulating your consciousness just before you will fall asleep. You can make things serious about your friends or your future. You can become an interior designer. But make decisions, make choices. And lastly, create a reality check. For me, it actually became connecting my right thumb with my thinking. Move my thinking just like this. And do it constantly. Whenever you will remember. When you wake up, when you will take a shower, when you will eat breakfast, constantly during the day. And when you are going to fall asleep, you will do it naturally. And when you will know that because you will be unable to do it. For example, in my case, it is impossible to do it because it's either my hand is invisible or I do not have any fingers at all. And please try. Do not give up. I know it may seem scary, but it is worth it. And you know that you are invisible? He said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And I think it is a perfect way to achieve that. Thank you.